Hey y'all, we're working through in terminal text editors today and this lesson is about Vim. Uh, we're going to talk about Vim really briefly in this video and just give the real basics as how you're going to uh, know how to use Vim in a very basic sense. Uh, there are times in which you'll find yourself in Vim in your terminal where you maybe didn't expect to be or didn't explicitly uh, tell your computer to open any files in Vim, but it is something that has happened. And this often happens when you're making commits uh, or doing things related to Git. So before we get into that, I've got a terminal open here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make a new file and I'm just going to call that file uh, deleteme.txt. I'm putting this uh, file on my desktop. I'm using the, the, the Unix command touch, which creates a new empty file. So when I execute that command, my file has been created. So then to open that file using Vim, I'm simply going to type the command Vim and then followed by the file name. Now, when you do this, you have to give either an absolute file path to the file that you'd like to open, or you can just be in the directory where that file lives. In this case, I created that file, deleteme.txt, on my desktop, and it is available uh, to me just by saying vim delete me, because I'm currently navigated to my desktop in my text editor, or in my terminal. So if I hit M enter, we actually get uh, into our file. You see this row of purple tildes over on the left hand side. What those are doing is they're simply space holders. They're not actually completing. Uh, they don't represent anything. And the contents of the file will be lifted up towards the top of my text editor above all those purple tildes. And then uh, down here at the bottom is where most of my commands or information will live. Now by default Vim opens in command mode. There are two modes. The first mode is command mode. The second mode is insert mode. And insert mode is what we actually use to uh, write to our files. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. As I mentioned, um, as it is, we are in command mode. But if I hit the, the key I, I can see down here in the lower hand where I used to have a little bit of information about my, fi my file, um, and now it says insert, which tells me that I am in insert mode. Um, it's also important to note that you can click wherever you want on this screen in this text editor, but that's not going to necessarily navigate you where you want it to be. Uh, Vim is really built to use only the keyboard to edit text files and be able to move through uh, and navigate text files. But I'm in insert mode, and I'm just gonna say this is the text that I want to save to my file. So once I've done that, um, I feel like I'm ready to save my file. So to get back to command mode, I'm just gonna hit the escape key, and I can see that, um, right, when I'm in escape mode, um, it no longer says insert down here. And most Vim commands actually start with a colon. So if I type a colon while I'm in command mode, you can see that what I'm typing comes up down here as opposed to in the actual text of the file. So maybe the first thing I want to do is just to quit Vim, just to leave. So that is the command colon Q. And you can see that I get an error when I try and do that. It says no write since last change, add an exclamation point to overwrite. That's saying if I want to quit without writing the changes I've made in my text editor to the actual file in my computer's memory, I need to use the write command. And much like quit is Q, you could imagine that write is W. And as I mentioned, this actually takes the text that you've put in the text file and writes it to the file that's being stored on your computer's hard drive or your memory. 
Um, in this case, I've got uh, colon W. I want to write, and now I should be ready to quit. So I'll go ahead and do my other command, colon Q, and I can see that I have uh, quit. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually going to open that file that I made and I'm going to do that in, I have a VS Code window open. This is maybe a text editor you're a little bit more familiar with, but I opened that file from my desktop and I can see that the text I put in in Vim is there, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, this is the text I put in from VS Code. And I'll go ahead and save that file. Once I have that file saved, if I come back over here and I open my file again, I can see that that new text from VS Code is in there, right? And I'm gonna do one last thing here. Um, I'm gonna say this is the second text I put in using Vim, right? Typically you'd be dealing with code when we're talking about this, but for now, I just, we're really focused on using the text editor, not using any sort of code. So I put this text in, I'm ready to uh, save or write my files. I need to hit escape, get out of insert mode into command mode. You can see I did that a little bit too early and I typed a colon up there. So I'm gonna go back into insert mode, delete that colon, make my changes, exit command mode using the escape key and then this time I want to write my file and save all at the same time in a single command. So what I'm going to do is just write my previous commands uh, together in one command. Previously I had w and q, colon w and colon q. This time I'm going to put them together and just use colon wq. Once I do that and I hit enter, I can see that not only did it uh, exit vim, but I can actually now see over here in the S code that text populate in the actual file because the uh, file changed from Vim and us using the WQ command to save and exit. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is I'm gonna talk about a little bit of Git. And when I'm talking about Git, Git is a version control system. You're going to get an introduction to it a little bit later in pre-course. That's pretty brief, but it's something that you're likely going to use on a daily basis, both during the DSI as well as uh, uh, being a professional programmer. This is how companies are able to uh, have multiple people working on the same code bases and keeping all of those changes organized in a meaningful way. But uh, first thing I'm going to do is I need to navigate to uh, I'm going to navigate to a file that I know is a part of a github repository um, I want to change directory to ds precourse so once I've changed directory now you can see I'm in this ds precourse uh, directory and I can always check my status here. I've made some changes to these files. So what I can do is I can add all those changes and then I'm going to want to commit those changes. So when I hit git commit, that's going to take the changes on my local computer and put them into the repository that's hosted online on a server. Um, when I do git commit, uh, as I mentioned, right, I didn't t say open Vim, I didn't ask it to open Vim, but what it wants me to do is it wants me to make some documentation about what the changes I've made are uh, before I make this commit, and it's opened these up in Vim. So uh, if I want to actually make the changes, again, I'll use I to move into insert mode, and I'll say uh, this commit has some minor changes to the file structure and the vim lesson so once i've done this i'm ready to actually uh, save and exit vim, 
Vim again, escape to get into command mode, colon, WQ to write and save, and then I exit, and now I can see that my commit has been made. There is one last part of this process. As I mentioned, this git process is not really what we're focusing on right now. It's that using a Vim. I just wanted to show you a situation in which you might end up in a Vim text editor, even though you may not have specifically asked or expected to be. That's it for the Vim lesson. Um, what I am gonna say is that Vim is super powerful. You can, there are a ton of pre-built commands built into Vim that can be really useful if you like doing uh, text editing inside of your terminal. Um, there's exten an extensive community as well as extensive documentation and a quick Google search will find you uh, tutorials pretty quickly. I guess there's one more thing that we could talk about before uh, we wrap this up and that is there is a built-in tutorial to Vim and you can be anywhere on your computer where um, Vim is installed so you can be in any directory and you can use this command called Vim Tutor and you can actually what you get is um, you get a nice um, set of lessons and a tutorial for Vim itself so right a lot of people you're mostly going to be encountering Vim like that git commit that I did um, so that can be really helpful. Um, but if you're someone who wants to explore this a little bit more fully, um, you can use this tutorial or find plenty of resources uh, linked in this lesson or on the BIM homepage.